day to all of you. Welcome back in our study and meditation. It's um, a very deep one on the letter to the Philippians. Be joyful even when things go wrong. This is your pastor, Yeti. Welcome also for those who are just hopping in for the first time. You know, you're welcome. I enjoy the time of doing this for all of you, knowing that it will change your heart, your lives. Not only that of you, but also others. So let's come in the chapter 11. And today I'm going to talk about you don't have to worry. We are in chapter 4 of Philippians. So if anybody had an excuse for worrying, it was the Apostle Paul. His beloved Christian friends at Philippi were disagreeing with one another and he was not there to help them. You know how it goes when you're in another country or too far from one that you hear that there is something going on and you cannot reach at that particular moment. I think it's an automatical button that is pushed and start getting worried. I think everyone has that. So we have no idea what Eodia and Sintehe were disputing about. But whatever it was, it was bringing division into the church. Along with the potential division at Philippi, Paul had to face division among the believers at Rome. Added to these burdens was the possibility of his own death. Yes, Paul had a good excuse to worry, but he did not. Instead, he took time to explain to us the secret of victory over worry. What is worry? The Greek word translated careful, anxious. In Philippians 4, verse 6 means to be pulled in different directions. Our hopes pull us in one direction. Our fears pull us the opposite direction. And we are pulled apart. The old English root from which we get our word worry means to strangle. If you have ever really worried, you know how it does strangle a person. In fact, worry has definite physical consequences. Headaches, neck pains, ulcers, even back pains, and even our coordination. From the spiritual point of view, worry is wrong thinking, the mind, and wrong feeling, the heart. About circumstances, people, and things, worry is the greatest thief of joy. It is not enough for us, however. To tell everyone, to tell ourselves to quite worrying because that will never capture 
I will not capture the thief. Worry is an inside job and it takes more than good intentions to get the victory. The antidote to worry is secure mind, the peace of God. Shall keep garrison guard like a soldier. Your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Philippians 4 verse 7. When you have the secure mind, the peace of God guards you and the God of peace guides you. Philippians 4 verse 9. With that kind of protection, why worry? If we are to conquer worry and experience the secure mind, we must meet the conditions that God has laid down. There are three right praying. Philippians 4, 6 to 7, and right thinking, Philippians 4, verse 8, and right living, Philippians 4, 9. 1. Right praying. Paul did not write, pray about it. He was too wise to do that. He used three different words to describe right praying. Prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. Right praying involves all three. The word prayer is the general word for making requests known to the Lord. It carries the idea of adoration, devotion, and worship. Whenever we find ourselves worrying, our first action ought to be to get along with God and worship Him. Adoration is what is needed. We must see the greatness and majesty of God. We must realize that he is big enough to solve our problems. And too often we rush into his presence and hastily tell him our needs when we ought to approach his throne calmly and in deepest reverence. The first step in right praying is adoration. The second is supplication, an earnest sharing of our needs and problems. There is no place for half-hearted, insincere prayer. While we know we are not hurt for our much speaking, still we realize that our Father wants us to be earnest in our asking. This is the way Jesus prayed in the garden. And while his closest disciples were sleeping, Jesus was sweating great drops of blood. Supplication is not a matter of carnal energy, but of spiritual intensity. After adoration and supplication comes appreciation, giving thanks to God. See Ephesians 5.20, Colossians 3.15-17. Certainly the Father enjoys hearing his children say thank you. When Jesus healed ten lepers, only one of the ten returned to give thanks. And we wonder if the percentage is any higher today. We are eager to ask, but slow to appreciate. You will note that 
right praying is not something every Christian can do immediately because right praying depends on the right kind of mind. This is why Paul's formula for peace is found at the end of Philippians and not at the beginning. If we have the single mind of Philippians, then we can give adoration. How can a double-minded person ever praise God? If we have the submissive mind of Philippians, the first one was, Philippians 1 and then Philippians 2. We can come with supplication. Would a person with a proud mind ask God for something? If we have the spiritual mind of Philippians, that's in 3, we can show our appreciation. A worldly-minded person would not know that God had given him anything to appreciate. In other words, we must practice Philippians 1 to and three if we are going to experience the secure mind of Philippians 4 Paul counseled us to take everything to God in prayer don't worry about anything but pray about everything was his admonition see Philippians 4 verse 6 we are prone to pray about the big things in life and forget to pray about the so-called little things until they grow and become big things. Talking to God about everything that concerns us and Him is the first step toward victory over worry. The result is that the peace of God guards the heart and the mind. You will remember that Paul was chained to a Roman soldier guarded day and night. In like manner, the peace of God stands guard over two areas that create worry. That heart, wrong feeling, and the mind, wrong thinking. When we give our hearts to Christ in salvation, we experience peace with God. But the peace of God takes us a step further into His blessings. This does not mean the absence of trials and the outside, but it does mean a quiet confidence within, <clears throat> regardless of circumstances, people, or things. <clears throat> Daniel gave us a wonderful illustration of peace through prayer. When the king announced that none of his subjects was to pray to anyone except the king, Daniel went to his room, opened his windows, and prayed as before. Daniel 6, 1 to 10. Note how Daniel prayed. He prayed and gave thanks before his God. Daniel 6, verse 10. And he made supplications. Daniel 6, verse 11. Prayer, supplication, thanksgiving. And the result was perfect. Peace. In the midst of difficulties. Daniel was able to spend To spend the night with the lions in perfect peace while the king in his palace could not sleep. The first condition for the secure mind and victory over worry is right praying. Second, right thinking. Peace involves the heart and the mind. You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind 
is stayed on you because he trusted in you. Isaiah 26 verse 3. Wrong thinking leads to wrong feeling and before long the heart and mind are pulled apart and we are strangled by worry. We must realize that thoughts are real and powerful even though they cannot be seen, weighed or measured. We must bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5. Sow a thought, reap an action. Sow an action, reap a habit. Sow a habit, reap a character. Sow a character, reap a destiny. Paul spells out in detail the things we ought to think about as Christians. Whatever is true. Satan is a liar, John 8, 44, and he wants to corrupt our minds with his lies, 2 Corinthians 11, verse 3. Yeah, had God said, is the way he approached us, just as he approached Eve, Genesis, Old Testament 3, verse 1. The Holy Spirit controls our minds through truth. John 17, 17, and 1 John 5, verse 6. But the devil tries to control them through lies. Whenever we believe a lie, Satan takes over. Whatever is honest and just. This means worthy of respect and right. There are many things that are not respectable, and Christians should not think about these things. This does not mean we hide our heads in the sand and avoid what is unpleasant and displeasing. But it does mean we do not focus our attention on dishonorable things and permit them to control our thoughts. Whatever is pure, lovely, and of good report. Pure probably refers to moral purity since the people then, as now, were constantly attacked by temptations to sexual impurity. Ephesians 4, 17 to 24 and chapter 5, verse 8 to 12. Lovely means beautiful, attractive, of good report, means worth talking about, appealing. The believer must major on the high and noble thoughts, not the base thoughts of this corrupt world. Whatever possesses virtue and praise, if it has virtue, it will motivate us to do better, and if it has praise, it is worth commanding to others. No Christian can afford to waste mind power on thoughts that tear him down or that will tear others down if these thoughts were shared. If you will compare this list to David's description of the word of God in Psalm 19, verse 7 to 9, you will see a parallel, parallel. The Christian who fills his heart and mind with God's word will have a built-in radar for detecting wrong thoughts. Great peace have they which love thy law. Right thinking is the result of daily meditation on the word of God. 3. Right living. You cannot separate outward action and inward strong, uh, attitude. Sin always results in unrest unless the conscience is seared and purity ought to result in peace. And the work of righteousness shall be peace and the effects of righteousness, quietness and peace. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure then peaceable. Right living is a necessary condition for experiencing the peace of God. Paul balances four activities 
learned and received and heard and seen. It is one thing to learn a truth, but quite another to receive it inwardly and make it a part of our inner man. Facts in the head are not enough. We must also have truths in the heart. In Paul's ministry, he not only thought the word, but also lived it, so that this listeners could see the truth in his life. Paul's experience ought to be our experience. You must learn the word. Receive it, hear it, and do it. Be you doers of the word and not hearers only. The peace of God is one test of whatever or not we are in the will of God. Let the peace that Christ can give keep an acting as umpire in your hearts. If we are walking with the Lord, then the peace of God and the God of peace exercises their influence over our hearts. Whenever we disobey, we lose that peace and we know we have done something wrong. God's peace is the umpire that calls us out. Right praying, right thinking, and right living. These are the conditions for having the secure mind and victory over worry. As Philippians 4 is the peace chapter of the New Testament, James 4 is the war chapter. It begins with a question, from whence comes wars and fightings among you? James explains the causes of war, wrong praying. You ask and we receive not, because you ask amiss. James 4 verse 3. Wrong thinking, purify your hearts, you double-minded. James 4 verse 8. And wrong living. Know you not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. James 4 verse 4. There is no middle ground. Either we yield heart and mind to the Spirit of God and practice right praying, thinking and living, or we yield to the flesh and find ourselves from torn apart by worry. There is no need to worry, and worry is a sin. Have you read Matthew 6, 24 to 34 lately? But the peace of God to guard us and the God of peace to guide us. Why worry? Let me give you two questions. What kinds of things do you worry about? Has worry ever accomplished anything good for you? How can we focus on what is pure, lovely, and of good report? while in a world of immorality and corruption. Let us pray together. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we come for your throne in love and adoration. What we heard in this lesson is probably hard to hear because we know as we are truthful to ourselves that some times in our lives maybe more or less that we admit worry there is always something to worry sometimes we also worry what we're going to wear this is not disrespectful said but worry is so close to our lives Lord and help us to live the right praying, the thinking, and living. We cannot do it by ourselves. We need each other. We need you. We need guidance from your Holy Spirit. And may the word from you 
transform our hearts. If we read Philippians or James, maybe hard words to read and to receive, but may it be a balm on our soul that helps us not to criticize or close the book, but leave it open so that the word that you gave to us is light on our lives and help us to change. Help us to pray the right prayer, the right thinking and the right truth. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. May the peace of God be with you and surround you. May his light shine on you and guide you. And may he keep you from all harm. I wish you abundant blessings in your day and rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord and don't lean on your own understanding. God bless and bye-bye. This is your Pastor Yeti.